Hey guys, welcome to FMP Toots. Uh, this is going to be an untraditional uh, video, I guess you could say, because I usually do things on computer programs and, um, you know, really show it through my screen. Today, now that I'm home from school for a bit, I'm going to show you a different approach of my tutorials. I'm going to be showing you a hands-on tutorial of how to make a camp stove um, with a regular 7-Up can. Um, having been a Boy Scout in my prime, uh, uh -huh. this would have been really cool to know. Um, unfortunately, I just recently uh, figured out how to make one. And I really wanted to show you guys how to make one. Uh, it's pretty easy. Um, we're going to start off by cutting off this inner loop here. Uh, you really want to make sure you're getting it on the lip as opposed to on the uh, circle area here. Um, So go ahead and grab a uh, regular can opener. Make sure you just line it up nice on the inside. Poke that through. And if you can rotate it, awesome. If not, just keep poking it. Looks like this time it's gonna let me, uh... nope, spoke too early. Go ahead and take this off as well. Uh, you could also try doing this with a pocket knife, uh, but it's actually a lot easier to just do it with uh, with the can opener. Alright, that'll be good. If you have a pair of scissors, go ahead and pull it out with the scissors. And then be sure to just tab it back in afterwards. If you have any metal sticking out. You just want to make sure it's flush with it. Empty any leftover soda that you might have inside of that. Turn this down a little bit for you guys. Alright, so now you can see it's just regular old empty can. Now, we're going to cut this so that we can make our combustion chambers uh, later on for the fuel. Um, I'm going to start off at cutting it about halfway. Uh, then I'll adjust it as necessary. Uh, depending on the fuel, um, you're going to want more space or less space for the oxygen. Uh, but like I said, for now I'm just going to start at halfway. Uh, please be careful doing this. I don't want any of my uh, viewers to come back to me saying that, you know, their kid cut themselves or anything like that. Go ahead and cut it so that you can allow for the maximum air between this lip and this edge here. You want this side to be sticking up higher.
this is where um, what kind of fuel you're going to use matters. If you're using something that's higher alcohol, you're going to want this side to be shorter um, so that you can have more oxygen because you're going to get fire from oxygen and the alcohol that you're burning. If you're burning a higher percentage alcohol, um, then you can you know, have less space for oxygen chambers and still have a perfectly good flame. Um, I'm using a pretty low level uh, alcohol based product. I'm just going to use a nail polish remover, acetone basically. So I'm going to try to keep this pretty short. I'm just going to keep cutting away at it actually. I'm going to make sure it's somewhat even. If nothing else than aesthetics. Alright, that looks about good for me, for what I want to use it for. Now, on this side, again, just square off the edge as much as you can. Make sure it's as uh, flat as you can. Go ahead and flatten out the edge if you have to as well. Some of it might have got bent up while you were cutting it at first. Just want to bring that edge outwards and then proceed on uh, making sure that it's flat. If you have to look at it from eye level, like looking at eye level, I can see that this side here is a little high. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of that off. Just like that. Alright, that looks pretty good actually. Uh, go ahead and clear off any brush that you have off to the side for now. The next step is uh, slightly dangerous. Please be careful doing it. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to put your two fingers uh, inside the can. Okay, keep in mind that some of this hair is going to be pretty sharp. So if you can, just flatten it out beforehand. If you have to use the edge of the table, uh, do that just to make sure you don't cut yourself later on. I'm actually going to wrap my fingers just in case. Alright, so bring your fingers in like that. And what you want to do is right between your two fingers, that's where you're going to want to put the knife. The knife is going to create a crevice within the tin foil, or within the tin can, uh, and that's going to become the chamber for the uh, for the oxygen to mix uh, and essentially turn into the to the f uh, flame. Uh, you want a bigger crease down here and a small little one up here. So if you see that original line right there, that's the first one I'm going to go off of, um, and then hopefully my, the rest of them will be parallel to that. Let's go ahead and get started here. So essentially that's what you're going to do. Uh, for the spacing, you're going to bring your two fingers, you're going to put uh, the edge of the finger on this crease and then create another one where your two fingers meet. So the spacing should be pretty consistent overall. Same process. I'm doing this with a knife right now. You can also do it with a pair of scissors, a pocket knife, uh, really anything that has a good edge to it. Here's a version with the scissor. 
I find that the scissor, however, does not create as clean of a uh, uh, indent, so I prefer to stick with the knife. Just keep working your way around. Take your time not to cut yourself. It's not worth cutting yourself. If you have to pop out a side, that's not a problem. In case you get one too many dents in it, or dents in the wrong spots. You know, something like that. You can just go back inside and just pop it out best you can. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. No big deal. Keep working your way around. And your last one. Touch that one up actually. Alright, and this is what it should look like now. Uh, some of them might stick in more than others like this one here. Uh, generally that's not going to be an issue. If you do feel like it though, go back and, you know, give a little bit more of an edge to some of them. Uh, just to make sure the fumes are getting up into the chamber and will be burned off uh, with the appropriate heat. Doesn't hurt to shape them in a little bit. Alright. Go ahead and give that a test fit into your actual uh, container. This one right here. Alright, and there it is. Fits nice and easy, you can turn it, yada yada yada. Uh, and essentially what's going to happen is the flame is going to come up through these crevices uh, because that's where the vapor will come. Um, and really, that's where you're going to get the most flame. Let's go ahead and do a test to see if how flat it is. Uh, it looks pretty good. All I'm doing is basically getting eye level with it. This side's a little high. I'm going to take a little bit of material off the hair while I can. Oh, that's a little bit more than I was hoping. No big deal. Alright, the last step of the process is to uh, create a couple of small punctures on the sides of it at the top. Um, ultimately allowing for airflow after you put uh, the, something on top, whatever you're trying to warm up. Um, it was something an issue that I was having with the first couple of versions that I was creating of this. Um, so, I'm just trying to fix that in this iteration. Go ahead and put it on the inside. Grab your towel or rag or you know, whatever is going to prevent you from poking your finger with the knife. And then with the knife, go ahead and go in here and just slightly jiggle it around enough to be able to create a puncture. That's really all you need. Um, some people will tell you to only make one. I'm going to do four uh, just for good measure. Put one on each side. Just because I know I'm not going to have a high grade uh, alcohol content. Uh, it needs um, more oxygen for it to burn. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and provide that. Don't be afraid if you uh, make the hole too big, uh, like I just did by accident. It's not the end of the world. Alright, that looks like that'll do just fine. Let's go test it out.
Thanks for checking out another one of my videos here at FMP Toots. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and you found it very useful. Uh, the main mission here at FMP Toots is to sh simply share the knowledge of uh, Revit, SketchUp, iMovie, and other software out there that uh, people might just have simple questions with or have, you know, a bit more complicated of a question. Uh, I really try to target as big of an audience as possible. Um, if you find that the tutorials are helpful to you and you think that they might, you know, you might have a colleague who's struggling, feel free to pass on the link. All you have to do is go to the top of the page, uh, press Control C on your Windows or Command C on your Mac, and then paste that link in an email, uh, on a Facebook message, even through YouTube. It's pretty simple. Um, if you'd like to continue seeing my videos, um, go ahead and like or subscribe to the page. This way you can get reoccurring updates saying that I updated or I uploaded another video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, hit me in the discussion area or email me at slkr2016 at gmail.com. Uh, have yourself a great day. Thank you.